All right, so we've been asked to approximate the area under the following graphs, and we're going to use a left-hand Riemann sum and four subintervals. So I want to just sketch what might this sort of look like to me. So I'm going to come over here, just kind of over the edge, and uh, x to the fourth minus x squared plus 60 is probably going to look something like this. Okay, so something like this. Uh, it's my guess. Uh, I could be totally wrong. Don't really care. Okay, uh, and we're going to say that's 10. Um, and so we're going to say, right, um, 8, 6, 4, and 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And they want a left hand, and we're going to start at 2 and use a left handed sub interval. Okay, so um, that means the left hand side is going to hit the curve. The left hand side is going to hit the curve. Okay, and so what we know is 2, 4, 6, and 8. 2, 4, 6, and 8. Those are the values that I'm going to have to find for my height. Okay, and we know delta x is 2, right? 2 to 4, that's 2 wide. Okay, that's 2 units wide. So basically, I just need the height. And the height is going to be the function value when we plug in x for this guy, okay? So let's, um, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to take my function uh, 0.01x to the fourth minus 1.44x squared and then plus 60, okay? So I've got my function um, down pretty well, pretty comfortable with that. And what do we know? We know that, that this function, we're going to have to plug in 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay? So we're going to have f of 2 plus f of 4 plus f of 6 plus f of 8 times delta x. Okay? So 2, 4, 6, and 8 times delta x. Okay? Now, I need to plug in values for each of these guys. That's going to be the height of the first bar, the height of the second bar, the height of the third bar, the height of the fourth bar, then times the width. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the height of the first bar. So the height of the first bar is 54.4. So this will be 54.4. The height of the second bar will be 39.4. 52. So it'll be 39.52. The next one will be 21.12. And f of 8 will be 8.8. .8. And delta x, we already said, was 2. So we're going to add those up. So we're going to have 54.4 plus 39.52 plus 21.12 plus 8.8. .8. And I get 123.84. And we're going to multiply that by 2. And we get 247.68. Okay. And that's a left-hand sum with four subintervals. Okay, four subintervals from two to ten. Okay, so let's try number nine. All right, so number nine, I went ahead and drew the picture for you guys. And uh, a couple of things they want us to do: they want a right-hand Riemann sum, and they want five subintervals. Sub We're going from negative eight to negative three. So right hand, if, if, this is, if this bar is from here to here, the right-handed side is what has to touch this function, okay? The right-hand side, okay? So one, two, three, four, five subintervals, okay? Right, so from here to here is five, five subintervals. We know delta x equals one. Right, so from 
negative 8 to negative 3 is 5 units, 5 subintervals, sub delta x equals 1. Now, because I multiply delta x at the end, right, I can actually ignore this because it's times 1. So really, I just need to add up these heights. So what are the function values I need, right? So this starts at negative 8, but the bar touches at negative 7. So I need f of negative 7, f of negative 6, plus f of negative 5, right? Negative 5, obviously running out of ink here. Change to a different pen, right? So f of negative 6, f of negative 5, f of negative 4 plus f of negative 3, right? Because our last bar is negative 3, the right-hand side, times delta x, okay? And I'll throw that in there even though I know it's 1. Okay, so now I need to find the value f of negative 7. How do I do that? Well, I plug a negative 7 in here, here, and here. And I've already done that. And so I'm going to just read these off to you. So this y value is 50.8. This y value is 50. This y value is 46. This y value is 40. And this y value is 33.2, okay? And of course we know delta x is 1. So we need to sum these together. So if I sum those together, if I say 50.8 plus 50 plus 46 plus 40 plus 33.2, I get 220 times 1, which is just 220. So, the area under this curve is estimated at 220. Now, I want to go back to these two. This one, we know, is what kind of estimate? It's an overestimate because we've got pieces of the bar sticking above the graph. So, this is an overestimate. And this guy here, we've got pieces of the bar under the graph. So this is an under estimate. Okay, so an under estimate. Okay, so let's use geometry to evaluate some antiderivatives. Let's use some geometry to evaluate some antiderivatives. Okay, so I'm going to draw these, okay, these three guys separately. So let's start here. What is f of x? 2. So I want you to picture the function y equals 2. What does the function y equals 2 look like? straight line and we're going from 0 to 2 so here's 0 here's 2 so we're asking you what's that area we're asking you what's that area that's what that questions asking from 0 to 2 on the x-axis there's your function. Okay, well, the height is 2. Right? Area is base times height. Well, the base is 2. The height is 2. There's your answer. Okay? How about this one? Let's try this one. Um... Right? This function is y equals x. y equals x is called the identity line. Makes a 45 degree angle. y equals x. Makes a 45 degree angle. And we're going from where? 0 to 3. So 1, 2, 3. Now, what shape does that make? If we go to x equals 3, it makes a triangle. Well, I need to know this height. Lucky me y equals x. So if x is 3, y is also 3. Okay, so this is a triangle. It's 1 half base times height. 
So in my case, it's going to be 1 half times the base, which is 3, right? From here to here, that's the base, it's 3. And then the height is from here to here. Or if you want to look at it over here on the y-axis, here to here, which is also 3. So 1 half times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 half of 9 is 9 halves. Okay, so that would be estimating that one with geometry. Okay, last one here. All right, we're going to x equals 10. And this is y equals 1 half x. Okay, y equals 1 half x. And so, again, it's a straight line. And if this is 10, half of 10 is 5. So what do we know? This is 10. And this is 5. And it's a triangle. So the area is 1 half base times height, which is 1 half times 10 times 5. And half of 10 times 5 is 25. Okay? So using geometry, could you take a problem like this, use geometry, then go back and do a left or a right hand Riemann sum and compare those answers? Absolutely. Okay? If you did a um, left hand Riemann sum, I'll use green, right? So you do, let's say you did every two, right? So left hand Riemann sum, right? So it looks something like that. I would get an answer less than 25 because it would be an underestimate. All the bars are under. All the bars are under the function. What if I did a right-hand Riemann sum? So the right-hand side of each bar would touch. What would that give me? That would give me an overestimate if I drew these all the way down, right? If I drew these all the way down, that would give me an overestimate. So it would be an answer over 25. Okay? So you can use Riemann sums and see how close you're getting with a simple function where you can use geometry. Um, you cannot use geometry for functions like this or functions like this. So that's why we use bar graphs. Okay? Riemann sums. Okay? The hardest thing here is just remembering for a left-hand sum, if you draw the picture, your function values will be those left corners. And a lot of people, they'll throw an f of 10 into this problem, but you're using the left-hand corner, not the right-hand corner. Okay, same thing here. This is a right-hand sum. Someone will want to give me f of negative 8. But that's a left-hand corner. We don't use the left-hand corner with a right-hand sum. So I hope that's clear. I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, let me know.